I'd like to build on my previous video, which explained the cost of carry model for investment assets that produce income by adding now an additional factor into the cost of carry model, and that is the storage cost. So storage cost is a cost of ownership, and it's going to push up or put upward pressure on the theoretical price of the futures contract. <laughs> My previous video explained the general form of the cost of carry model. That's right here where the small c denotes the cost of carry. And it could embed or contain any number of factors that contribute to a net cost of carry, where the idea was we observe a spot price today. And under this model, we can price the theoretical forward or futures price as a function of that spot price and the net cost to carry or own the commodity over the period as represented by small c. And so we also said that there is a distinction between investment and consumption commodities. We're following John Hull and uh, McDonald, other authors here, where they share in common a borrowing cost denoted by a uh, small r which is the interest rate and in fact the risk-free interest rate. And then we also said that a consumption commodity almost always incurs a storage cost and we'll denote that with a small u. If we think about consumption commodities like corn, uh, oil, natural gas, a soybean, wheat, all of those incur, all of those are not cheap to store. So the storage cost is a cost of owning or carrying the commodity that would need to get included as a factor. Investment commodities in general do not have storage cost. After all, it's not expensive to store the S&P 500 index, for example, but we can imagine investment commodities that do incur a storage cost. So that's why I have this a little bit disabled um, because that's not the key distinction between investment and consumption commodity, but we will, um, We've denoted that small u. And then recall that in my previous video with investment commodities, we showed how to um, model income or dividend, which uh, we're denoted following John Hull, small q. And so, and I've also colored that green because obviously that's a benefit of ownership. So it's going to tend to increase this theoretical, I'm sorry, it's going to decrease the theoretical futures price as an offset to the borrowing or storage cost that would increase it. And um, in a later video, I'll focus on the convenience yield, which in fact is the key difference between these two. It's the convenience yield that is the defining characteristic of the consumption commodity and introduces some other challenges. But for right now, we're interested in modeling the storage cost denoted by small u. And so we've said that this cost of carry G, that's th this cost of carry C, right, is general and it would include always the interest rate R, which is a cost of borrowing and would drive as a positive value would drive this price up. Plus now, the storage cost, similarly a cost of ownership, pushing this price up. But on the other hand, if there's income or dividend, that would be a benefit, a tangible benefit of ownership that would pull this price down. So going in the other direction with a negative. So in this case, three factors that really um, implement the cost of carry or is a specific instance of the cost of carry. So I could put parens around it over some maturity t, and then that becomes the exponent. And we have the spot price observed. So that could be a valid model for the cost of carry. That's f sub zero then is a function here of these three factors in the specific. So if I now look at just three examples, the first is of using storage. Um, the first is some abstract investment commodity that has a, a storage cost. And the this is Hull's example of 5.8, a one-year futures contract on an investment asset that provides no income but does cost $2 per unit to store with payment at the end of the year. So in these time value of money, 
formulas, of course, we need to be mindful of the timing of lumpy uh, cash flows like this. And so this is a lumpy as opposed to continuous assumption for the uh, storage cost. We're also told that the spot price is $450 and the risk-free rate is 7% per annum with continuous compounding. So those three assumptions are here. We have spot price, maturity, and interest rate. And then, so here's the storage cost. And in this case, it's a lump sum or lumpy storage cost. And we'll denote that capital U following John Hall. So notice the capital U, large U for lump sum, small U on the other hand is for continuous um, or const in constant proportion to the spot price. That's my last example coming up. So in this version of the cost of carry, what we need to do though is take that $2 and discount it at 7% over one year, right? It's paid at the end of the year. So the present value of that $2 today is 186. In this version of Hull's, Hull's version of this cost of carry, this U is a lump sum, but it's a present value, right? Notice it's right alongside here, the S sub zero, and that's the spot price where the zero denotes uh, today. After all, a spot price is generally current. So that's the only variation on that cost of carry. Our risk-free rate as a cost of ownership continues to be a positive value in the exponent. And you can see, then we implement this and we get um, a theoretical futures price for this investment commodity that has a storage cost here of $484.63. Now, once we're good with that, it, this is the solution that John Hall shows. If, if we're good with that, then um, it's probably, you can probably uh, understand that this theoretical futures price is a future value such that the other way we can go is just take that out here and simply add the $2 at, um, onto the futures price. And you'll notice I get the same result, 484.63. So not the solution he shows, but just to show you that that's actually a future value and the capital U is a present value. And we could introduce that storage cost as a lump sum in either way. Okay, second of third, three examples. This is uh, Hull's end of chapter 515. I, did, I meant to say end of chapter 515, and this is silver. And so silver is our classic example of a commodity that is that is not necessarily either investment or consumption, but could be both. So the assumption here is a nine-month futures contract on silver. So notice that assumption is captured here with the maturity. The storage cost is 25, uh, sorry, 24 cents per year payable quarterly in advance. So the terminology there is very significant. And then the spot price is $15 with a risk-free interest rate of 10% per annum with continuous compounding. So a, a, you can tell we're using an old, uh, the risk-free rate of 10% is so high. This question is old. Apologies for that. Obviously not a realistic risk-free rate assumption, but I wanted to just honor the uh, example that's actually in print with the version I have. So um, uh, forgive that's not realistic. But the, okay, so um, as before, we're just introducing the lump sum. Although here, it's just a little more involved because we actually have over the nine months, we have um, three lumpy storage payments to make, right? It's, um, it's payable in advance, so we have the six uh, six cents. Uh, it's six cents per quarter because it's twenty four cents per year. But that first six cents is payable immediately, so it's just as is. And then the next six months is discounted. That's that's six discounted at e right. I uh, six cents multiplied by e raised to the negative ten percent right, multiplied by, it's going to be payable in three months, okay, and then we have another six cents, and it's payable, we're going to discount that at 10 cents, 
and it's it's payable in six months so multiplied by six divided by 12 so i have six cents payable now then in three months then in um six months and so these two are discounted at three and six months respectively at 10 percent that that just is a present value of those three cash flows, and it solves for uh, just about just about a little higher, uh, almost eighteen cents. So that gives us a lump sum. And as before, it enters the cost of carry here. If as a present value, which we've solved for capital U here, it just gets added into that cost of carry model in the front, and we get a uh, sixteen dollars and just about 36 cents and we've incorporated the storage cost as a positive value which pushes up the price of the futures contract so the final example is that i just wanted to show uh, a continuous version here so now i've modified hull's assumption this is not one of his questions this is my modification to it we have the same um same basic assumptions as before, $15 spot price, nine month maturity, $10, unre uh, sorry, 10% unrealistic uh, risk-free interest rate. And this time I've changed, the only assumption I've changed is the storage costs. So now we're saying, instead of having lumpy storage costs, which are realistic, we have something that's unrealistic, but is academically easier or more tractable for us in the formula and we'd say this time the storage costs are two percent per annum but with continuous compounding or put another way as a constant proportion of the spot price so that's a small u as a cap as opposed to a capital u and and by the way on exam questions you tend to see this assumption given right as a small u if for no other reason then it's it's less tedious to work this way because the small u then it's much like the risk free rate it plugs into the exponent as a positive value as i mentioned at the beginning so now into this this problem now we've the cost of carry c implements in this way with these two factors with the risk free rate of 10% plus the storage cost as a constant proportion of the spot price of 2% so in the exponent then that we're going to have e raised to the 10 plus 2 or 12 percent multiplied by the maturity and we get in this case a theoretical price of 16 dollars and 41 cents and actually pretty close uh, just about five cents different from what we got with the lump sum there's actually we could actually solve for the continuous version that would that is equal to our lump lump sum of, um, but I'm not doing that here. I just guesstimated and I get a pretty close result. But the point is that uh, our theoretical futures price now incorporates a storage cost, which is a positive value in the exponent of the cost of carry model. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel and you'll get notified of updates. Thank you.